Good evening. I'm not sure how many of you are going to hear this tonight or how many of you will hear it in the morning and as the day goes on tomorrow, but I wanted to come tonight to bring a call, a call for prayer and a call for intercession, a call for if you choose to meditate and go into the astral and into the ethers. However, it is that you reach the divine realms. I'm calling tonight for all who do so to do so. At the time of this recording, which is approximately 9.22 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, about an hour ago, or maybe a little bit more than an hour ago, the United States, the President of the United States, ordered and decided to retaliate for the against um, Iranian forces for a reported drone attack on American troops over in the region. I am not at any in any way, shape, form, or fashion blaming, shaming, or otherwise deriding our troops. All that serve in the military all that have served in the military. My heart, my deepest and most sincere thanks goes to you for your service to this country and to the families of those service men and women who were lost recently, who have now transitioned my deepest sympathies and prayer for peace to you and to those that have perhaps lost their lives and we don't even know because we don't know who's over there, what's going on. Um, for sure, um, again, anyone that has lost their lives in service to this country at the behest and direction of the current commander in chief. I definitely, again, thank you for your service and thank you to the families. And we mourn and grieve the loss along with those families. Now that being said, I know some of you might think, why is she out here talking about interceding and praying? And I thought she was all into all that other stuff. Well, regardless of what stuff I may or may not be into, there's one thing that still holds true and one unwavering truth that shall never change. And that is that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. Now, your definition of my righteousness or someone else's might be different from mine, and that's okay. But this I also know that where two or more are gathered, where two or more are gathered. And in actually the gospel of Thomas, it really takes one. Yeshua said it took one and that the spirit of God, that the spirit of love, that the spirit of light, that the spirit that created the universe that is the source of our very being that from which we have life and movement because we are children of that source. We are an aspect thereof. We are having a human experience. And when we transition out of this human body, we shall return back to from whence we came, which is source energy. Now, because of that, and because we have been given the capabilities, because we are in, we are made in the image and likeness of source. We are light, 
beings and eternal beings first and foremost, those of us who are light workers, who are beings of light, who are working light, who have nothing but love, who are our, 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 our whole purpose, and we, we love our fellow man and woman, that we love the creation, not that we worship creation, but we love life and we love love. And lovers of love want peace. Lovers of love do not want war. Lovers of love want every man, woman, and child to live in a sanctuary, if you will, a, an ability for them to prosper in their purposes, for them to not fear as they lay down and sleep that they will never again awaken, that there not be bombs raining, raining over their heads, and that they not have to leave their homes and seek shelter, that they not lose loved ones. This is the prayer. So yes, I do still believe in intercession. Yes, I do believe that we can send our prayers and our desires up. And when we say to the mountain, move, that it shall move and be cast into the sea. And one of the other mm, interpretations of mountain are structures of government and governance. So we need to say to the mountain to move. We need to say to the rough waters, peace be still. Waters meaning energy. There's another interpretation for that as well. Seas meaning groups of people, ethnicities, countries even. So the waves that are raging, the waves that are swallowing up, that are angry, that are filled with shadow and darkness. This has nothing to do with an election or political party. This has everything to do with humanity. Now, our wars and rumors of wars were they foretold in the Bible and in other many and many, many, many other texts? Absolutely. Throughout centuries, absolutely. And everything does point to this being a turbulent time. And if I know some of you don't believe, nor do you understand astrology. However, let me just say to you this, that the last time Pluto entered Aquarius, there were not one, but I believe three different wars during that time period. One was the Revolutionary War here in America. One was the French Revolution, and one was the Haitian Revolution. The Haitian Revolution being the revolution where slaves rose up against their slave masters and owners, and they freed themselves from their French colonizing oppressors. The only slave revolution that has ever freed an entire country, mind you, the only one in all of human history. I say that to say this. There are always going to be turbulent times every time that this occurs every couple hundred years because it's the signs and the seasons. Believe it or not, believe it, it doesn't matter to me. But what does matter to me is this, is that this time around, the word can get out. This time around, the call can go out. There is also a uprising and consistent conflict in Israel between the Israelis, the residential Israelis and the Palestinians. And while I'm not taking sides on this conflict, this is what I will say. Children are dying. People are being displaced. There's a fight over a strip of land where all of you can coexist. 
war, no matter what war, has consequences. Casualties. Innocent people perish because of someone's desire for power. Defending yourself is one thing. But we need peace in that region because that region, because of the superpowers behind either side, can kick off something none of us want. Literally, none of us want. So it's time to put aside however you're feeling about whatever and place more of your energy towards praying for peace across the world for humanity's sake. All the while there is this great uprising, there is a great awakening. Men, women, and children all across this globe are awakening to their higher consciousness of who they are. They're awakening to the control that has been broadcast as news and propaganda in every country on this globe. Every last one. We're waking up to the reality that some of us are coming to understand that the roosters are coming home to roost, that the people we trusted and that the people we entrusted and that we chose to just stand by. We can't trust that. Left is right and right is left, up is down and down is up. It's a bizarre world. We can't trust that. We can't trust that. We have to see things for what they are. And there's a great, great awakening happening. So what I'm saying to all of you is you're awakening to this, is you are understanding and understanding that we've been given the rights and the abilities on this earth, on this planet, to speak a thing into existence, to believe a thing into existence, to choose to operate from the higher vibrational frequency of love and then to spread that higher vibrational frequency of love and light to eradicate darkness and shadow and war. I'm asking each and every one of you to intercede, to pray for peace. Now, so we say, I don't pray. Well, can you at the very, very least meditate? Can you at the very very least think, contemplate, concentrate on peace, concentrate on love and send that energy out into the earth. And those of you who intercede, it is time to bind on this earth, all those that would mean harm to all of humanity. It is time to speak confusion into the camps that are fighting one another. It is time to bind on earth so that it is bound in heaven. It is time to loose the heavenly host, not beloveds with any specific agenda on your end. Loose the heavenly host, the angels, those of you who are in relationship with your ancestors, those of you are in relationship with your guides, who all of those that mean for light and love in this world, it is time to loose them, to, to release them into this earth to create peace without loss of life, with minimal loss of human life. It is time. It is time for you to loose it on earth so that they can be loosed in heaven and in the heavens and in the ethers then fight the battle that needs to be fought there because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But beloved, there are principalities. There are rulers of this present darkness. 
that are at play here and wish to see the destruction of humanity, wish to see the destruction of civilization as we know it, so that they can then move into place and into position of ultimate power. It's the same story from the beginning of time. Those of you that read the Bible, it's in Revelation. I'm sure there's other apocalyptic and revelatory books in everyone's spiritual practices. Be it Sekhmet or Kali or it's your choice. Ragnarok. Choose. However, it is time to intercede. It is time to take all of our love. It is time to, as we used to say in the church, storm the gates of heaven. Intercede at the throne of God to go up into the universe and into the ethers and speak back to the earth, peace be still. to release the angels to do their work and to still the hand, to stay the hand of those that seek war, not peace, that seek destruction and not creation, that seek death and not life. No one wins. No one wins. I will speak to you soon, but intercede. Light your candles. Go to your prayer closets. If you have light language or speak in tongues, it's time to do it. But let us send a great cry. Let us send a great creative energetic force for peace and love, prosperity, and no more war. Thank you. I'll, I'll see you soon. Namaste. Ashe. Amen. Good night. <laughs>